So this is the user interface of uh, NetXMS connected to our the system in, in the office. So we have uh, here, along with other stuff, few ATMs that we do testing on. So this is one of the main views that you have in the system. We call it infrastructure view. So on the left, you have your, your logical structure of our monitor. Uh, you can create whatever hierarchy you want. So for example, here we have, we have the, the top level infrastructure services, and we have the ATM networks, and we have the group called all ATMs, and then we have some ATMs inside. And uh, you can do whatever grouping you want by geographical location, by responsibility, by vendor, etc. Here we have few ATMs. Uh, when you select something in the tree, on the right side, you will see the context information for selected object. So if I, I select another ATM and it's, it will change. So here on the overview, you have some basic information like uh, the IP address, uh, if it's connected or not, etc. And you have a lot of other views uh, to get additional information. So for ATM, you also have the ATM overview where you see the, like the current status of the ATM hardware. Uh, you see a list of active problems, you have list, see a list of uh, hardware, reported hardware errors, and so on. Then you have the cache view, where you have the current levels of cache as well as historical values. The ATM was offline, so we don't have uh, recent data, but uh, we can change the interval. Uh, for example, for last week, okay, you see the, the, the chart of the cache for last week. It's not operational, so obviously it's not changing, but in the real life, you will see the dropping graphs for each cassette. And you can switch between cassettes and logical cache unit view, which is handy when you have logical cache units that combine multiple cassettes. Uh, you can also look at the raw data, which is how data is actually reported through XFS, which again can be quite useful when you do some troubleshooting. Then you have list of active alarms uh, for this ATM. Like here we have, for example, the cabinet door open alarm. You can look at the journal of the ATM. So we provide near real time synchronization of ATM journal. So agent on the ATM will watch journal file and it will detect changes or updates to the journal file. And the agent will send those updates to the server. So all electronic journals for all ATMs actually stored on the server. So even if ATM is inaccessible, it's offline, it's switched off, you still have copy of journal on the server, which is again could be quite useful when you do troubleshooting. So we also provide search through journal files. So you can select a group of ATMs and you can choose uh, search journals. And then you just enter search string, open, and it will show you all ATM journals for all dates where there is matching string. And then you can just double click on it and you will get to that particular journal file for that particular date for to see it. And you can, uh, you can of course, save the journal to your workstation. Uh, you can collect any number of metrics from uh, ATM or any other device. And so in the data collection view, you can see what metrics are being collected. And we collect here, you can see like we collect some basic operating system level stuff like CPU usage, memory usage, which is also important for ATM monitoring because you can have issues, for example, with CPU usage on ATM and then the hardware will be looking fine. Everything will be looking fine, but it will be overloaded and work slowly, etc. You can monitor a lot of metrics that are operating system related. So you can monitor uh, memory usage, disk usage, uh, CPU usage. You can monitor running processes, number of processes, number of open handles, uh, et cetera. You can also monitor any log files, including Windows event log on the ATM and search for certain errors in, the, in those logs, if, if there are errors reported in, in those logs. For any metric, you can just double click here and get a quick line chart. By default, for last hour, you can quickly change it with uh, presets, or you can um, choose any specific time interval to look at. And it, this uh, list is completely configurable, so it can be adapted for your specific needs. And agent can provide like uh, hundreds of different metrics, so you can choose what you actually uh, need, want to monitor.
You can configure performance view, which is again fully configurable. The idea is to have a quick graphical overview of key metrics on ATM. So basically any metric from the data collection can be marked to be shown on the performance view. We provide basic hardware and software inventory. So in the hardware inventory, you see what is uh, the hardware as reported by ATM computer bias. And so it really depends on an actual computer. So for example, here we have a Debolt ATM, which is a bit newer than Winker, and it reports much more hardware components. We have software inventory. It's a list of all installed packages on the ATM. Basically what you would see if you go to add remove programs on the ATM, uh, you will see that the same list. And it is updated automatically. So when a new package is installed or package is updated, NetXMS will eventually detect it and it will also generate events for this. So you can actually have notifications when a new package is installed, for example. You can get process information in real time. You have this process view for the ATM. You see all the processes running and you can even terminate the process directly from here so basically you right click on the process and you can choose terminate and if agent can it will terminate that process same for windows services so you can take a look at windows services on the atm you can start and stop services from directly from the monitoring you can change the startup type for the service directly from here. The user sessions usually not really interesting because it normally on ATM you will have just one user session. They automatically log it in on the, on the console. We also provide file management capabilities. So you have the remote file manager that so you can browse files on ATMs. You can choose any file. And we're going to select show and get the file downloaded to your workstation and display it right in the monitoring user interface. You can also save it to your workstation using the download. And of course, you can upload file to the ATM. You can rename, delete files on ATM. So all the basic file management functionality. It is also possible to schedule file upload. So you can select a group of ATMs, select the file to upload, and select the time when to upload. So you can do update of ATM screen files uh, at night, update advertisement videos, etc. cetera. Uh, you can take a screenshot from the ATM. So this is what's currently going on on ATM screen. And you can switch to the screencast mode. So basically you can sit and watch what's going on on the ATM screen. Go customer interact with the ATM, for example, to detect some problems, etc. It's also possible to execute comments on ATMs. We call it tools and it's completely configurable. So we have a tools menu. You can restart ATM remotely. You can run process. You can get some additional information. It is fully configurable. You can create your own tools. So this, for example, is the tool that show the log file of the agent itself. And it's live, so you can actually open any log file on the ATM remotely and watch for changes, which sometimes could be useful if you want to understand what's going on during some debugging. And you can configure it for any file. You can restart the ATM. And this, of course, is controlled by access rules. So you can define what user can do, what actions, uh, and so on. You can set geographical location for ATM. So if it's set, you can go to geolocation view and it will show you ATM location on the map. And you can actually set location directly on the map. So basically you just select the point on the map and set it as a location and it will be set at that location so it's really that easy we use open street map for the geographical map it's really high quality and free to use and you can set up your own map server if you want to a little bit back to the journal files we have different ways of uh, representation what is going on on um, ATMs. Like here we have a view called status map. You can select any group and it will show whatever is inside as the colored boxes with the colors from green to red representing the current state of the device. And you can switch to different modes who you actually want to display it. Then we have all kinds of dashboards. You can configure your own dashboards. Everything is completely user configurable. Let's see what we have here. There are some examples like uh, for ATMs, usually you have all sorts of overview dashboards, like the map of ATM network, list of outstanding alarms, distribution of ATM statuses, and so on. You can also create network maps, which 
basically some logical maps you can put objects on the map you can put data on the map just to show some hierarchy maybe or some logical structure of your network we have integrated reporting. We use just a report for generate as reporting engine. We do provide some standard reports out of the box, for example, like the ATM availability report, and we can create any custom reports for you. And we also provide database uh, data dictionary, so you can also create reports yourself. For every report, you can execute it on demand or you can schedule report execution. So for example, it's possible to schedule report to be executed every Monday morning and to send the result of the report in a PDF format or XLS format to certain emails. And let's try to see what we have here. So this is just an example of rendered report. So it reports a list of problems for ATMs for specific period and also downtime for the ATM for specific period. Everything is logged, so you have all sorts of logs in the system. It's actually tables in the database, so you have history of all alarms, you have ATM transaction history, empty on our system because there are no transactions. We have full audit log, so all changes and actions by users within the system also logged uh, so you can see who do what and uh, who change something. List of a block of problems detected on ATMs. It's, it's mostly used by reporting, but you can also do direct query to this log. Same for hardware errors, don't have any recorded and so on. You can do live monitor of events, usually not needed, but yeah, sometimes you may need it for debugging. There is a lot of things that can be configured. We won't dive into details. This is a configuration view. You can see how there's a lot of items that can be actually configured in the system. One of the most important is event processing policy. This is one of the central parts of the system. It defines how to process different kinds of events that happens. And it's quite flexible. In most cases, you just want something to like generate alarm to be visible in the monitoring system, or maybe you want to send a notification when something goes wrong. It is possible to do escalation. So you can send a notification, for example, when ATM is not responding, not reachable. And then if it's still there in like, you know, in, in four hours, you may want to send an escalation email to the manager. And it, it's possible to configure like this. Again, very flexible. You can have multiple escalation levels you can have notifications to different people depending on where problem happens or when problem happens so this is one of the most important parts you can define different notification channels as we call it so you may have notification via email via sms via certain instant messaging applications so we have quite a big list of available channel types out of the box and we can add any custom notification channel as part of project implementation and you can use multiple channels in parallel so you can send an email and you can send an instant message to the microsoft teams for example and simultaneously or depending on situation that is what i mentioned the what we call the object tools you can define your own so there are different type of tools you can execute command on the server you can execute command on the remote system you can get some data you can execute kernel script within the netxms system and for every tool you can also define access control who will actually see this tool and will be able to execute it. A little bit about users and access control. So we have internal user database, so you can define users and groups directly in the system. It's also possible to integrate with external directory using LDAP protocol. So you can connect to your active directory, for example. In that case, the users will be able to log in with their normal active directory, login and password. And you can mix them together so you can create a local group and add LDAP users to that local group. For local users, we also support to factor authentication you can use uh, one-time passwords sent over any notification channel or it could be a TOTP, so you can use any TOTP authenticator application on your mobile phone as a second factor for login every user can have a lot of rights it's a quite granular so there are system level rights you see quite big list and it's mostly related to what parts of the system the user can configure and also you can define access rights on every any level here in the objects so 
every object has access control element and you can define which user or group of users has what access to the object and it is access rights propagated down the tree pretty much like you have it in a file system for example and you can redefine uh, access rights at any level for the user and again there's quite a big list of uh, different access rights on specific objects so you can do very granular access control in, actually in the, in the system we also have what we call asset management. You can create assets and every asset can have different kind of properties. This, uh, we call it the asset management schema. You actually define in the, in the configuration of the system, you can define what properties every asset will have. So you can create uh, whatever attributes you want and uh, then you create assets. You can link assets to actual ATMs. We also see, for example, we have asset linked to ATM called Winker. And so if we go to the Winker ATM, we should have asset information here. So you can enter IP address, model, vendor, etc. And you can, can define whatever set of attributes you want to keep track of your hardware assets. So that was very, very a quick overview.